Uh, so is this... Oh, look at that. There's the line. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. You just made up a ton of spots. All right. This is a short track race from Benelli, the first uh, pro XCT of the season. Yes. I'm, cup. I'm Coach Jonathan Lee. That's Keegan Swenson. Hey, guys. And we're actually on board with Keegan right now, so you can see the footage. Uh, for those that don't know what short track is, can you describe what it is really quick, Keegan? So short track is basically like a mini... Uh, XDO, Cross Country Olympic. Normally it's about a one, one and a half K loop, I think. Um, laps are around one and a half to three minutes. Anywhere in there, really depending on how much climbing there is, the terrain, whether it's grass, pavement, dirt, etc. Um, and yeah, we generally, the men generally race for 20 minutes plus three laps. So this call up position is super important. It uh, is. And something that's this short and this intense, right? Yeah, especially on, um, especially on a course like this where it kind of funnels on this climb that we're looking at right now. Um, they call up, normally they do uh, call up based off cross country the day before. Um, so I call up, I didn't have the best cross country race, so my call up wasn't great. I was uh, about 20th call up, which is actually, normally rows are eight wide and this was only six wide. So that put me in, I think I was, would have been about third or fourth row. Fourth row. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so a pretty far back when you're dealing with yeah. uh, a, an international UCI field with Pan American champions, with like legit fast people. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as people can see, te technically, these races usually aren't too demanding in terms of like, uh, it, it's not like a super gnarly enduro stage or anything. This is usually, it's less technical, but much more tactical. Uh, this course, so at Benelli, it's really grassy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at those watts coming out of that turn, right? Um, this is going to be about a 20 minute race. So we have some time to go over the course, I guess, in just a bit. First thing that I want to point out is... It is windy, right? Can you let us know roughly like the direction of the wind and where it's coming from? Yeah, so the wind uh, today was coming out of the, right on this front straight you're looking at now, it's coming straight down that. And it was pretty gentle. Um, it wasn't super strong. It was strong enough that no one really wanted to be out there by themselves for too long. <laughs> you're so, just hovering at like five, Yeah, and it was like kind of like gamble. Like, oh, I got to get out here and try and move up. And you don't want to spend too much time in the wind. So you'll see me here trying to tuck in behind, uh, behind Chris here. You did something really good there. So like something that I see a lot of people do is, especially in a race that's hard, then easy, hard, then easy. A lot of the time they'll just coast, they'll just coast and break behind people when the mm -hmm. pack slows down. But you let your momentum drift, drift you forward, right? Yeah, I mean, a race like this, you want to try and be as smart with your energy as possible. Um, and there's a lot of like the accordion effect. If you guys know what that is, it's where like you come into a turn and the guys in the front hit the brakes and then it stretches back out and then you have jam on the brakes and sprinting. So you kind of want to use momentum and try and you know, swing the corners wide if you can and slowly move up and then drop back into the field and kind of use, you know, use your speed. So I see Chris Blevins up there in the Stars and Stripes. He's the current national champ. Uh, so he's definitely, is he a rider that you're targeting on this one? Like you, if Chris moves, you want to catch him or you want to stick with Chris or are there other riders that you're keeping track of? How are yeah, you I mean, pace? all these guys are, you know, all these guys are really strong. Um, I think Chris is probably the most tactically savvy at short track. He is a short track national champion. Mm -hmm. He's won Benelli before. Um, so he's probably kind of the guy you want to try and follow if you can. He has a lot of experience in road racing. He does. Too. Yeah. So he spent a lot. He's spent a lot of time on the road racing crits and whatever else. So he's probably the most tactically savvy out of all of us mountain bikers. You're pretty small, relatively speaking. Like, what was your weight on on this day? Um, probably around 146 ish. Yeah, <laughs> pretty light. <laughs> yeah. For doing like, it seems like every time you punch it, it's 600 watts to six to 800 watts basically, and then like right here. You're drifting back now. Settle in at 260. Probably a quick little ease up right here. Nope, you're still on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so right there, it looked like those. there's a preem lap. Yep. Everyone went fast, and after the preem, everyone slowed down. Oh, and there you go. You attack. Yeah, so the preem, it's kind of like a, I mean, that's kind of my move sometimes. Like, I, the people go for the preem lap. Everyone kind of sits up, settles down, and they want to rest after the fast lap. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it works if you just, like, snap it hard off the front. Um, I was trying to create a bit of separation because I really don't like racing in those big groups like that. Yeah. I definitely prefer if I can get off the front with, like, you know, three to five guys and we can just roll it and keep it a steady, like, more of, like, a threshold effort. Yeah. That's my thing. I prefer, you know, steady threshold pace versus, like, as you can see, like, 400 watts, 700 watts, you know, whatever it is. It's, like, right. a little really punchy. Um, so if, if you can, that's that's what I like to do. So at this point, what was your intent with that? Was it just because, well, it slowed down and I have momentum, so I'm just going to go for it out of principle? Or did you have a deeper strategy here? Were you trying to see if people would react and come with you? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of hoping that I could get one or two guys to go with me. 
Um, I, I mean, I know it's kind of a gamble on this course, just with the way the wind was, and I mean, it was already fast to begin with. Um, but you know, you don't know unless you try. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not like I'm definitely not going to bet on myself sprinting against Chris or all these bigger guys. Yeah. So I, I definitely like to go over kind of the long bombs. Yeah. Possible. So at this point, you're you're trying to see if you can get anybody to grab to make this race more steady. Yep. Instead of punching. Trying to string it out a little bit and just keep it fast. Because then if it slows down, you get guys coming from the back up to the front, and there's guys that might be able to get up there and they're strong for a second, then they blow up in front of you, and then you're stuck behind them, and yeah. like it's now, it harder. At this so. point, you're at like 350, which is still ridiculous, but it's it's easy for you. Are you hoping somebody comes around you at this point? I was hoping, yeah. I backed yeah. off, hoping that like someone was on my wheel and that I could sneak around, that, that we'd be able to keep rolling. But then I realized the whole group was still there. Like, they had rolled up onto us, and no one was able to go with me. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not going to sit out here by myself. So I just sat up and, you know, waited for these guys. There's no point in going on the front, right? No. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd rather sit behind these two guys. Oh, here. they don't look happy. <laughs> no, they uh, they kind of get into it a little bit. The uh, the guy in the blue was pushing around the guy to the left there on the last lap, and then, uh, then the guy on the left pushed him into the trees, and there was this whole <laughs> argument. So... <laughs> it happens, you know. Sometimes it's better to use your words than it is to uh, push someone off the track. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 no doubt. So he looks like a big rider in front of you. He's at very this, big. At this point, <laughs> this is a good spot for you, right? Like yeah, you're, you're there's another sitting. big guy coming in right there. So I was like, oh, you can go. I'll just sit on you. And you know? teammates. And they're teammates, yep. So at this point, are you worried about those two riders in front of you? Uh, like, do so you much. think that they're race win- potential race winners that you really have to mark, or are they just riders that are... I mean, I think so. Like now. they may definitely have it. They, I mean, uh, they could either one of those guys could win. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of hard. I mean, I wasn't really sure what they were gonna do. Their teammates. I was like, this guy could sit up and let his teammate attack. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll just try and sit on him and try and ride this draft for a bit. Um, I think I mean, the key on this race is trying to stay as far to the front as you can. You you don't want to sit in the wind the whole time. But I think it's worth, um, as you saw me do earlier, moving up the pavement to try and drop back in near the front because you get too far back. Then it gets stretched out in this turn right here, yeah. and then it gets stretched out again when you hit the pavement. So it's just nice to try and stay a little further at the front. Some foreshadowing there yeah. uh, of things to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I want to talk about the grass turns really quick. Uh, so this isn't particular to short track necessarily because mm-hmm. this exact spot was on the XCO course as well. Yep. But uh, oh, there he goes. So teammate yep. attacks. Other teammate sits up. I'm He's like, looking nah. back. Yeah. Let Chris go this time. Yep. Yep. And now that teammate, it looks like he's fighting pretty hard, though, because he wants to stick on to anybody that's chasing, mm-hmm. which is exactly. the right thing to do if you're a teammate, right? Um, so good on him. On those grass turns, oh, yeah, and he isn't getting away, that teammate. Didn't work. Uh, were you guys just all out unlimited traction, or was that, like, tenuous? Oh, and there goes the other teammate. <laughs> good. That's what a teammate should do, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, back to the grass turns. Um, so that first turn, the first left-hander off the dirt, yeah. It was a little bit sketchy. You had to kind of swing wide. As you see me do, and I swing into the weeds to set up for it. Yeah. Um, the grass was getting a little chewed up. And it was a little loose. So you kind of want to set up your turn there, and then you just, like, aim for the sticky grass, the green grass, and <laughs> yeah, then yeah. finish your turn on that, and then try and set up for the next one. But the remaining, remaining turns had a lot of grip. Okay. Um, you could pretty much rail them as hard as you wanted, and you wouldn't break too much traction. Like, here and there, the wheel would kick loose, but it never slid out. So. Right. Uh, where the grass had faded then, that was where traction was not as great. But then exactly. where there was more grass, you yeah. had traction. Yeah, and I think part of it was gravel being dragged onto that grass. Mm. Um, and then part of it's just people just skidding on it. and Yeah. So <laughs> Tight quarters. Short yeah, you see that mean Luke just almost got pushed into the yep. bushes there. and Yeah. You kind of have to... So that section there is actually off camber. It is. People might not be able to tell, but it's actually yeah. pretty substantially off camber. It's pretty hairy, especially yeah. when you're, everyone's pretty shelled. <laughs> <laughs> you're you know. thinking straight, right? Yeah. Um, so at this point, you're, what, like seven riders back maybe? Yeah, somewhere about that. Around there. Um, still behind some fast folks. Yeah, the guy in front won the XCO. He's yep. a, a U23 from Mexico. Yep, a so. Pan American champ maybe. Yeah, right and he's now? been on the yeah. U23 World Cup podium, so he's... He very good it. very good racer yeah. um so you're you're in a good spot right now but still look at the wattage that you're having to do i mean it's 600 out of that turn 700 out of that turn then fades up every time to like 300 <laughs> then back to six yeah. or seven so this is still like this looks like a situation to me where you have a lot of people that want to win and mm-hmm. that could win so they're just not letting any breaks go so yeah. out of every turn it's hard nobody's you know going easy enough to really let anybody yeah, get away exactly and so the pace is staying just high enough that no one can really get up the road i mean right here we're going pretty easy yeah um 
and I think everyone was kind of happy to do so there for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit tricky. I mean, I think, I mean, I have to say there's probably 10 guys, maybe 12 guys that could win the race. Jeez. And they're all right here. So it's hard to mark. So on any given day, I mean, it's anyone's race. It just really depends on who has the best legs and who has the best tactics. I mean, I think, in my mind, Chris is the one to beat. Yeah. Um, but anyone else can still win. It's not like it's a given, so... So in a situation like this where you, I, I assume at this point you were starting to recognize, like, I don't think separation's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, how do you change your tactic? What are you thinking now? Like, what's your what's your plan B since getting away isn't going to happen? Yeah, so after that move kind of didn't work out at all earlier, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, kind of pulled the pin on that, and I just tried to kind of surf the back a little more. Okay. Um, try to Ooh, stay in the back there. and uh, just rest and try not to ever hit the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of the strategy as well, just kind of save it for the last couple laps. Okay, got it. So at this point, you're hoping to be in good position to be able to maybe not sprint for the win? I tried although to pop on that climb earlier or something right. like that. And I think I definitely used a couple matches on that lap trying to get away. Yeah. Um, you know, be it, you never know. <laughs> I feel like uh, if <laughs> I wouldn't even be on this for a lap, but I feel like out of these turns, it, it really they, it is using matches. It is every turn. Turns, I mean, I mean 850 watts, right there, watts. Yeah, every time. So that's, it adds up quickly. Jeez, that's it. That's really hard. I guess this is what it's like racing a pro field versus uh, my average Joe field. <laughs> uh, so right here, another thing that I notice is when you drop into this spot, it seems like now diving inside is tricky mm -hmm. because it can get closed down pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, but did you find any spots where like it was consistently fattening up, and then you felt like you could just carry some momentum around them? Yeah, um, I'll actually show you guys up here in okay. about a minute exactly where that was working pretty well. I mean, you could always move up on the pavement, like where it would kind of bunch up, or even when it strung out, you could still kind of move up if the pace wasn't too high. Mm. Um, and then this turn, this fast right-hander right here, you could, uh, if you set up right for it, you could maybe pass some guys on the inside, or you could carry speed on the outside. Okay. I personally like to go inside here because the outside, as you see here, I kind of get pushed into the tape oh yeah by the big dude yeah <laughs> and like i'm not going to win against 170 pound guy so you kind of have to you know <laughs> yeah. just take it and deal with it yep um Ooh, that's tight but right here um if you carry a speed around the outside you could sign to move up yep um right there you know, it didn't happen um but you just cool. there's a little grass berm there and you could stay on the gas around that turn um and try and work your way through the field and then carry more momentum up this climb which was important because you can see every time it's quite hard so you, the more speed you can carry in the better yeah so you have Russell Finsterwald in front of you there in the cliff kit. Yeah. He's, uh, he has experienced road racing. He run one Hot Route Rockies, I think. Mm -hmm. And then he's also, he's been a breakaway partner with you before in some fat tire crits for yeah. epic rides and some other stuff. Yeah, we work pretty well together. Yeah. So. so at this point, I'm sure you're probably, you know, you're even though your plan B now is to just be there in the end, I'm sure you're also thinking, hey, man, Finsty. Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, we actually talked about it, and we were, like, kind of thinking about trying to make something happen in the end, but... Uh, he kind of ran out of gas, and I didn't have anything left either the yeah. last couple laps, so it didn't really work out. What was the heat like today? Like, or what was the, t I guess was, the, uh, the conditions like? It was pretty hot. It was kind of surprisingly hot. I didn't think it was going to be that warm. Um, Isn't the 80s think, Fahrenheit? Yeah, maybe? it was probably like mid-80s, so upper 80s. We raced at like 3 p.m., 3.30. Somewhere in the 30s Celsius? Yeah. I'm bad at converting that. But Yeah, Celsius is confusing. <laughs> I know it's hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Ooh, look at that right there, though. You still, you just, you're cruising 190 watts, I mean, now more, but you were able to move your way up like six positions right there just mm -hmm. by carrying more momentum around the outside. Yeah, that's the key. Just slowly trying to work your way up every time. I like that. Trying not to uh, not lose your speed. Right. So in this, uh, for a course like this, it's not very technical, mm -mm. uh, hardtail or full suspension. I was on the hardtail. Okay. Um, Which is the pivot less. The pivot less. Yep. So 29 or hardtail. And I raced the, uh, Aspens as usual. Yes. Max. Yeah. Max. <laughs> like Aspens. I've considered running the, uh, the max lights here. Okay. This, they're like a super light, really fast rolling tire and it might pay off. But the problem is that one off camber on the descent, like you really have to baby it down that. Yeah. Um, so like it'd be. I don't know. I've always been kind of curious to try it. I feel like I've seen Jeff Kabush race him here before, and I can't remember if it worked out or not for him. <laughs> Jeff would but, be. That's uh, a Jeff move. That is sure. a Jeff move, and I, <laughs> I'm not much of a gambler with tires. I kind of like to stick to what I know. And yeah. Um, the other thing is, like on this climb here, and you stand up, the faster rolling tire would be spinning and slipping. Yeah. But it would be you'd save a lot of energy on the pavement, so it could work. And in the grass, maybe yeah. too. And in the grass, because I mean, the wider the tires are, the more grass they grab, and the slower they roll. Right. So. Right. 
So right there with that little plate, I noticed sometimes people are hopping it. You're usually going around it. Was that intentional for any reason, or is it just to save energy, or were you Mainly worried to about save hitting energy. the edge? Um, I hopped it here and there. Like I was able to sneak past a few guys there early on in the race. Yeah. Um, but mainly I like to go around it just because it was less energy than hopping. I didn't really feel like slamming into that concrete and risk like doing something to my rims or tires. Right. Um, right. So just going around, it was just easier. So at this point, you're really just about conserving energy. It's not like anyone's going to pull away from me if I didn't go inside. Oh, another hard hit out of that turn. Yeah. Um, and, then it, and then it fattens up. I've noticed that kind of like, uh, but look at you, smart, going around the outside of people now. Yeah, trying to move up. And even if you don't get around somebody, you just... You saved energy, right? Because you had more momentum. Mm -hmm. So you might so as well you just, carry it. Because otherwise you're hitting the brakes. And a few times I messed up and got stuck behind someone, and you sprint and then slam on the brakes. So you're like, I just did 600 watts, and then it hit the brakes. For nothing. So yeah. I might as well have backed off, coasted. But sometimes you do have to do that because if you don't stay right on the wheel, then someone else is going to fill that gap. Right. So it's kind of like this balance of knowing who's behind you and like knowing if there's a place they can come around Yeah. Um, as to whether you – like you know, do that like sprint and jam on the brakes thing, or if you just try and flow it. Um, so you've so got, you you got know. four and a half laps left almost right now. Yeah. So yeah. you're in, yeah, so halfway through your fifth lap to go. Mm -hmm. um, so your Luke's going outside until oh, they yeah. make a good pass there. Look at that. Yeah, so that's a good move. Then I'm able to sneak past Kohei here. Oh, and, and I get plugged they got up. pinched. Oh, right. So, it, yeah, sometimes works, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And this turn, this little hill right here. I assume that you, being a smaller rider, if you could have clear track, you'd exploit that. You would use that little yeah, hill as like a definitely. Small that's like to get some separation. Like the best place for me, I think, is up. It was uphill. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it's hard because it's so short. That I mean, any of these guys are strong enough; they can just whack it over that climb at 600 watts, 700 watts every time. Yeah. So it's it's kind of hard you know, to make any separation there. In this section right here, where you come in wide i, I want to look at that spot where you're talking about trying to hit like better grass mm -hmm. i can see right there how worn out it is that could be really slippery and it yeah. seems like in the apex especially that's where things get the most worn and there mm -hmm. you're hunting you were hunting for fresh grass there in that yeah so you're swinging wide and trying to set up yeah. and then hit the apex just right so you're not because if you aim straight for the apex you're just gonna have to slam on the brakes and then turn so oh yeah, oh. I tried to sneak through there on the inside, and that's that's, that's the thing. I got pinched pretty hard, and he probably knew I was there and closed the door. Yeah. So. He, that was uh, that was smart of you to try to take that. Yeah. Line Never know. Sure. I mean, maybe he didn't sense me there, and I would have been able to sneak through. But. Yeah. So at this point now we have you know we're into the fourth, I guess the you have four laps to go. Mm -hmm. This is the the lap here. <clears throat> Looks like I mean it's a pretty the, a number of riders have snuck up ahead of you. It's a pretty fat group up there. Mm -hmm. I see Finsterwald, I see Alex Wild, I see Kohei, there's the uh, yeah, two Canadians. In other words, you've got like a lot of people that can still win the race yep. at the front, but still no separation. Exactly. Uh, so is this, oh, look at that. There's the line. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. You just made up a ton of spots. And that was just by yeah. easing through. It was maybe like, you know, a little bit of extra work, but for all those spots I got, it was, you know, definitely worth it. Yeah. The other thing here, you don't want to end oh. up, if you get left there, you get stuck. Um, into the bush like into the bushes thing. unless you like can hold your line yeah so i noticed that you keep a straighter line through that section than most people that off camber that's something try to that's i mean sometimes if there's someone going inside that i knew i was quicker than i would go go to the right and go low and be able to sneak past them yeah but if i was on my own and i had the option i always pick the inside you know, always want to take the path of least resistance <laughs> 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 so is this uh is this a day where you're looking at like skin suits and aerodynamic improvements like that sort of a thing yeah generally um so i use I, mean, I always race in the same kit it's just in the air the osos aero jersey okay so it's pretty quick I mean, it's not quite as fast as skin suit but it's got like aero sleeves and it's very tight form yeah. fitting yeah um, it looks like a skin suit when it's yeah, on you basically yeah yeah um and then are you ever getting into on this course do you have time to get into like a, a tuck position where you maybe grab differently on the ball sometimes um, if you were alone off the front or if you were with a small group you would but when you're in a group this big you definitely want to keep your fingers on the brakes and you also want to be able to jump on the trigger and shift it's because you never know uh, what's gonna happen it's kind of slow right here and all the gamers are up front it looks yeah. like you know uh, is that one of the Desera? Yeah, both the Deceras are up there, yep. I think. Uh, Andrew Lesbronce, and then there's another Norco rider, Sean Fincham. He's in there somewhere as well. So so they've got a big team. He might be right next to me. A b so. Yeah, big team. Two teams, really, up here. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we're on, you know, three to go. Did you think that anybody was going to make a move to go with, like, uh, with three to go, and were you hoping to latch onto that, or at this point were you I was, like, kind of hoping, because um, I still had a little bit left in the tank there. Um, so I was kind of hoping someone would try and take off, but honestly the pace was so fast at this point that like, I don't think anyone was going to get away. Yeah, and I mean it would have been tough to even get up there with where you're at. Yeah. If somebody went off the front, it, it would be, I mean, it would be really hard to get into position to catch that yeah. with this fast of a field. It just blocks exactly. up so See, much. See, I went to go left there and get Ooh, past that guy there. Smart. So. I like that. And then close down again. <laughs> yeah, so here I did the, the inside, so I didn't want anyone to sneak by me because I knew everyone was really tight. Yep. So I was like, the one time, I was like, oh, it's worth hopping over that little piece of concrete. So at this point, you're also, this is where you're fighting for position perhaps more than you were in the previous laps. Yeah, everyone, where, everyone gets a little more aggressive. Where do you draw the, or how do you draw the line? Ooh, yikes, break yeah. check. How do you draw the line? Like, are you an elbow thrower, contact maker? Like... Yeah, I mean, I, I like to try and keep it pretty clean. I mean, generally, if, like, someone flicks an elbow at me, I, then I, I'll throw it back and, you know, try and take, hold my line. Yeah. But I'm not going to go out of my way to push someone or elbow them because I kind of feel like, you know, we all racing together and no one wants to crash. And I feel like what goes around comes around. If You know, if someone hits you, then you're going to want to get them back. Oh, look at that. It so this was, out there. This was also the problem here. I was a little too far back, and then uh, we had to go pretty hard here to get back on, and um, that was one of my mistakes. So I, I should have just been further up to begin with. It looks like out of the grass. See, the Russell just blew up there. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's kind of cracking at this point. Explosion. And we, were, we were chasing pretty hard to get on that lead group. It looks like um, when he came down into that turn before the feed zone area, which obviously mm-hmm. they're not feeding See, in that. Arrow tuck there. <laughs> just hoping. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gains. But you're actually, I mean, you guys kind of crawled back on there. Yeah. So you're back with them. Uh, it looks like the rider in front of you surged really hard out of that turn and then kind of ran out of gas. It didn't quite make contact. And that yeah. Was, that was a bummer. I mean, I was because you don't get contact through those the, on the pavement, then you're chasing. Yeah. And otherwise, you into the wind. And the guys up front that were just behind the Norco rider and I, I think that was, I don't know, one of the Deseras. Like they were just getting a free ride. You know, we were mm-hmm. chasing. So. Yeah, into the wind too is the worst part. You don't yeah, want to be chasing exactly. into the wind, right? Yeah. Um, when they have a fat group up there. Yep. So a rider snuck by on the inside. Clever. Oh, yep. another rider. I didn't even I didn't see him coming. <laughs> I was about yeah. to close the door. Sneaky. I didn't hear him back there. Sneaky. Came out of nowhere. So in that turn right there, where it comes down, it seems like every time coming down or every time you pedal through that section it's a dip. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that you pedal downhill. You don't pedal as much on the uphill part. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that intentional? Because it's a pretty hard effort, and I thought it was interesting that you were really putting the gas on on the downhill part instead of the uphill. Ooh, geez, almost a thousand watts. Yeah, started to get hard there. Because yeah. um, this is coming into last lap. Yeah, but yeah, back to your point there. I was. I like to try and keep, you know, back to the point of momentum. I think if you can get a few extra pedal strokes on the descent, and then kind of coast, and now I'll, I'll obviously like that turn was bunching up as well. Yeah. So like, well, if you let a few, if you let a few guys, if you let a little bit of uh, gap open up, you're just gonna close it right back down anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of about conservation of energy. And I was pretty blown at this point, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like seeing that try and come around here into the wind, it was like, nah, not yeah. going to happen. So I just <laughs> have to go back in behind the wheel and stay where I am. Uh, I think I was paying for that one lap attack earlier. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you never really had a chance to recover from that, right? No, because then the pace started to pick up again. And um, yeah, that was kind of it. I was put the nail in my coffin. <laughs> so last lap coming into this. You're feeling pretty wrecked, yeah. Like yeah, the gap like opens bar- up. Like I'm barely hanging on coming yeah. to this last climb. Ooh, it looks sketchy there with some riders. Yeah, yep. pushed around. So, yet you can still punch it here. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Gritting the teeth for 500 watts. Yeah, know? yeah. So that was kind of it. So what's your what's your threshold uh, at roughly for something like this? If you want to share that. Uh, 380 right now. 380. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you night when you know all of these punches are so far over threshold. So this is like an ex- this is like a microburst workout, basically, where with very minimal yeah. rest and it lasts for 26 minutes and never stops. Exactly. Like, <laughs> your average power isn't super high, but like I set a new like 20 uh, minute heart rate threshold for the year. Yeah. It was like 182, which for me is really high. Like it's hardly budged. I think the max <laughs> I've seen is like 185. It just like it's just like sitting right around 180, 185. The entire time, there's not like a whole lot of fluctuation. Oh, so. so it looks like it's strung out at the front. Yep, this is it, and I just but your toast lights are out. Yeah, the engine point. light was on, and 
at this point. You know, you're just trying to get to the finish line in one yeah. piece. <laughs> it's so. never a great idea to sprint into the into the finish for like you know twentieth place, right? Or something yeah, like I mean, that. like for me, short track is like you know podium or bust. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't <laughs> I don't want to do anything stupid in the finish and crash or have anything go wrong. But you, still, I mean, you still want to try and hold position. Obviously, you don't want to give them all up. But. For sure. Well, you're gonna have more of these coming up this year. The Pro XCTs. It'll be fun to put it on for some fat tire crits to get some yeah, definitely. footage from that. That'll be fun. Um, Those are awesome. From you and your teammates on the Sands Pivot team. Yep. Uh, Keegan, thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. If anybody has any questions on this one, head over to forum.trainerroad.com and you can check it out. If you like this video, like it, give a thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. If you're curious about what we do here at Trainer Road, head over to trainerroad.com.